This is the second part of the Django Permissions tutorial mini-series looking at object level permissions. So more specifically in this tutorial we'll go ahead and install Django Guardian and look at how we can manage the Django admin site utilizing object level permissions. If you are completely new to Django permissions and maybe Django in general then definitely head over to the playlist and find the Django permissions tutorial section and from there you'll see the previous tutorial where we go through the basics of setting up a small project and looking at Django admin permissions and that should take you nicely on to this tutorial. I have committed myself to four tutorials in this mini series so far and we can definitely add more so after this we'll have a look at views and templates utilizing model level and object level permissions. Just one final check to make sure this tutorial is exactly what you're looking for. In this tutorial we're going to go ahead and install Django Guardian. We'll go through a very simple setup process and look at how we can instantly interact with Guardian to apply object level permissions. At that point we're then ready to think about configuring the admin site to actually apply the permissions once a user logs into the admin site. A link in the video description should take you to the code for this tutorial or for the previous tutorial number one uh, you can go ahead and just download this y you can apply this code that we're going to generate today on your own project um, but if you want to there's a an example project here again a link in the video description go ahead and download that if you do go ahead and download the code in the video description for this project if you want to follow along then what you will find once you start the code you can log into the admin as either admin staff or user their username and password are the same so admin admin staff staff user user and this is where we're going to start so here we're going to be working on the inventory model it's just a simple model it, if you have downloaded the source code again for this project you will find that it does have the SQL like file and I think there's a product already inserted if you go into the admin area there is some code from the previous tutorial what we're going to do is just remove all of this code so first up then before we start to install Guardian let's just talk a little bit about very quickly object and model level permissions so just to clarify what this means so user is a model so we have in our project a, a new project here called inventory inside of inventory we have our models so this is what we're describing as a model uh, this is going to be a table in your database product and typically Django when you create a new model like we saw in the previous tutorial it provides four permissions or it generates four permissions read write delete access that model now these permissions are all based on the model so here what we're trying to do is go down to that next level we now want permissions based upon the rows or the objects that are stored inside of this database so here when we describe objects and we could say that these are objects in the database so potentially um, if we had an inventory table of products maybe we only wanted staff to be able to work on the shoe products instead of the other types of products so this is going to allow us using object level permissions it's going to allow us to apply permissions on individual rows or objects inside of our table so a simple scenario imagine you have some sort of login system and you only want staff member to be able to access their own profile here in the users so what we need to do is basically add a permission on this object here associated to that user and only allow that user to access this object here rather than provide access to all the other objects on a on a mo model level permission basis so in this tutorial to implement object permissions we're going to be utilizing Django Guardian there are some other packages that offer some similar tools and features but here we're going to be using Django Guardian so let's go ahead then and first of all of course we just need to go ahead and install so pip install Django Guardian Close that. And once that's done, you need to go into the 
your settings file. You just need to add that to the installed apps. So that's just going to be Guardian. Then in addition to that, we also need to hook into Guardian's, or Guardian's authentication backend. So just a little bit of code there at the bottom here. Once that's done, we will we will need to migrate. So let's go ahead and migrate. That's going to install the the tables that we're going to need. So I'm just going to open up the database after that migration, and we should now see there are two new tables that have appeared: the Guardian Group object and the Guardian User object. So you can see here that this potentially allows us to apply object level permissions. Uh, utilizing groups and users. So let's just go back into our inventory admin here. We just need to re-register the product table or model. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. And let's just go back into our admin. I'm not sure what happened there. So we now have the inventory model accessible in the admin. So at this point, there is there's nothing we can do. What we need to do here is activate uh, Guardian so we can start to apply uh, object level permissions. And we can do that straight here from within our admin area. Although we can do that programmatically, um, have a look at the Guardian um, documentation for that. We're just going to be utilizing it in simplistic terms, uh, utilizing the interface that's going to be provided once we activate Django Guardian. Happily take a, a deeper view or look into Guardian in another tutorial. Right, so what we're going to need to do here then is Guardian essentially provides um, a wrapper uh, around admin.modeladmin. So what we need to do here then is just register our model slightly differently. So we use the declarator admin.register and then we're going to register product and then we'll grab or create a class. Let's call this product admin and then here we have the guardian uh, or sorry guarded uh, model admin so we just need to bring that in so from from guardian dot uh, admin let's import guardian admin model okay right so with that in place um, we don't need to do anything special here I just list display um, just name remember this needs to be a tuple okay so with that in place we now have this wrapper around the model admin and that's going to provide us guardian features straight away so if I go back here and just refresh uh, go into product sorry and refresh once we drop into the individual products here we now have a new option object permissions so from here you can see that we can apply permissions both on a user or group basis so here we're going to we're going to have a user called staff so we created a user called staff and you can now see we have the four permissions the default permissions that were applied when we created the model uh, add change delete and view so we've got now more control over this specific object this product one object here so we're just going to go ahead and choose all and press save. So now what we have is that the staff user here, or it could be a group, of course, I'm just going to apply it to a, a user in this scenario. We now have the ability to control access for individual objects here. So for product two, you can see that we don't have any permissions set. So we can utilize the fact that there are no permissions assigned to anyone uh, to control who can access this product or not. So at this point, the user staff can only or should only be able to access product one because that's the only place where we've assigned object permissions. So now we have a target to focus on. We want to make sure that the user, that's the staff user, can now log in to the admin panel and only access the product model and then the objects within the product model they have privileges to access or permissions to access so just double check in the users as the admin user we're just logging in 
just make sure they haven't got any permissions at all. So the staff user doesn't have any permissions at all set. That's important. So I'm just going to press save there. So currently then when we log in as the staff user, they don't currently have any access to any of the models or any of the objects directly. However, behind the scenes, we know that we've set an object level permission on that object. And we want to now be able to filter that so that the staff user can access that individual object. Let's think of the Django administration site as in layers. So we have three layers. So first of all, the first layer here is the access to the models. So typically on this first layer here, we could then view the models. We click on those models and that takes us to the second level, which is the, the list of potentially all the objects within that model. And then of course, the third layer is we click on those individual objects and that takes us to the individual object page. So we have the tools here in Django to directly assess whether a module should appear on the admin index page based upon the user's permission. So that's has module permission. So let's go ahead and just load this up. So here we've got a function called uh, has module permissions. Has module permission. So here, like I said, this will allow us or provide us a control of determining whether a module should appear on the index page for a user. So uh, we'll return uh, super has module permission. So that's essentially just going to return true or false. So depending whether it, if it's true or false will depend on whether the user can then view a model. So at the moment, this staff user cannot uh, view. So let me just uh, change the permissions for the user staff. So remember this is module level permissions. Uh, so we go back into inventory here. we we'll are just give them these inventory permissions and press save again. So go back as staff. So now they can see the, the products as you would expect. Okay, so let's just change this slightly. Let's say if, if they do have permissions, so this should return true. Let's go ahead and return false. So if the user does have permission, which they do, of course, to view the, the model, um, then we're going to return false. So that would mean, of course, that they now don't have permissions. But I just wanted to highlight the fact what this function does and what it provides us, because what we're going to need to use this for is that, remember, we're going to set the staff user so they can, so they have no model level permissions. And we're going to harness the object level permissions. So if they do have, uh, if they do have access or permissions to any of the objects inside of that module, model, sorry, um, then this needs to be turned on so that they can actually see the model, even though they don't have any model level permissions. Okay, so hopefully that makes that makes sense. I'm um, just introducing you to some of the tools that we're going to be utilizing. We will change these and we'll connect everything up. So secondly, then let's have a look at get query set. So we need to be able to essentially in the second level, we need to be able to display a list of items that the user can access based upon their object uh, level permissions. We can access the query set uh, utilizing the get the get query set. So this will give us direct access to the query set. So this is just going to return the query set. So. Uh, nothing will have changed from this. So if I go into products, now remember I have set the staff at the moment with the model level permission so that they can access all products. Now we know that the object level permissions for this user, they shouldn't be able to access. Um, I think it's, they shouldn't be able to access this product too. You can see if I go into product one, um, they, they do have access to this on an object level permission basis. Um, but not uh, product two. So that's something that we need to fix and that's what we're moving towards. So next up then, let's just remind ourselves of how we can override the permissions, if you like. So here we have model admin has view permission, add permission, change permission, delete permission. So here we can override whether the user can perform any of these functionalities. So let's just go back into 
our admin area here. I'm just going to log back in as admin. I'm now just going to remove the model level permissions from the staff user again and press save. So now when the staff user logs back in, obviously they should be able to access any of the models. Right. So I've gone ahead and add the three functions at the bottom here of the admin for the, the product table uh, or product model. And here you can see what we've done. We've essentially just overridden the permission. So we've now set permissions for view, change permission, and delete permission to true. So regardless of the user, that's the permission that's going to be applied. So if I go back into the admin area, we still can't access the model on the index page. Remember, that's being controlled or, or managed uh, by in this case, the has module permission. So we still don't have that permission to essentially access um, the model because at the end of the day, we haven't set that permission in the object level permissions. So we still have set has view permission to true, but this is going to be performed or this is going to be changed uh, on, the, on the next level. So if I go into, and now I've got some recent actions here, so I can kind of drill down here. So it still says we don't have permission to view or edit anything, um, but we can still access the, the products objects. And we can then utilize these permissions to change the permission. So let's just change this all to false, for example. And we'll see that then instantly changes the permissions to be able to access the individual objects. So if I refresh now, we have 403 forbidden. So just reminding ourselves of the goal, we're trying to set up the staff user. So even though they don't have model level permissions, because we've set the object level permissions, they should still be able to access the model if they have object level permissions on any of the objects inside of that model. Now, what we need to do next then is we need to dynamically change the permissions based upon the permissions that have been set for the user. So because the staff user will have object level permissions on a model, they should be able to view the model to access the uh, fields or the objects in that model. And then they should only be able to then access the objects they have permissions to based upon the object level permissions. So now we're going to go ahead and create a new function, which is going to determine or check whether a user has permission. So let's do uh, has permission and we're taking self, uh, the request data um, object that we're kind of working with and then action. So the action will be, uh, for example, view, change, delete. So we're going to check essentially whether the user has permission to uh, view, change or delete. Right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead now and... So we're gonna need access to the model name, and we can do that through meta. Um, let's go ops. Uh, so we're going to need to grab, because if you remember from the previous tutorial, in order to check whether a user has permission or not, we're going to be utilizing has perm. So this returns true if the user has been, has specified permission. Uh, so we need to remember the format. So it's at label and dot permission code name. So remember in the table, uh, we had the code name in the table. So just double, I'll just show you that. So if we go into there and go into our permissions can see we've got the code name so that's referencing the different permission so notice it's add and then an underscore so let's go ahead and just set up the the code name so that's going to uh, equal uh, so we need the action so we're going to pass in the action so that action remember is going to be well, let's just go back here show this table again so the action, typically the code name starts with the action view, delete, change, etc. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to pass in the action here so that we can utilize that and build the code name. And then second to that, we then need a an underscore 
and then the second component which is going to be the the model name so ops uh, dot and then let's grab, grab the the model name okay so that's going to grab the model name uh, so here in this case we are utilizing the product so you can see here we've got add change delete and view product so typically that's how by default at least the default permissions are going to be set up every time you migrate your different models so this is the, the name of the model product okay so if we are working on an object what we're going to do then is we're going to say if object um, and then we're going to return request dot user so we're going to um, check whether the user has permission so we use a request we passed in the request information we can then access the user and we're going to use have has sorry perm has permission we're going to check to see if they have permission so here then um, we're going to pass in ops uh, dot app label so we're going to need the app label Apologies, app label. Um, I'm trying to think ahead here. That's why uh, app label, and then dot code name. Code. Code name. Okay. So specify the object. There we go. Right. So what we what's happened there then is that we've now checked to see whether the user has permission um, for a particular object now remember this is working this is working um, on the second layer you remember uh, the layer where we list the objects within the model so what we need to do now is we need to hook up our functions here to our has permission so we can check to see if the user has have has these permissions so let's do that so we're going to say self uh, dot has permission um, and then we're going to pass in the request the object and then also it, the the action so view for example in this case so we we'll do the same thing again for all three Obviously, we just need to change the the permission. So this is going to be it's going to be change, and then this will be delete. So permission then on the app label and then the code name. So let's go back into here. You can see we've got um, we've got four permissions. Yep. Okay. So we don't need that. Apologies. Right, so now we've set that up. So it's going to check each of these permissions um, for each of the objects in our list. So the behavior I'm expecting here is that what we've done, we've set up to check for the permissions uh, on individual objects. So what I'm expecting here, remember the staff user, we set up a, a an object level permission on the first product, I think it was. OK, so they were able to view and edit and change that product. However, on the other products, we would now expect them not to have any privileges at all because that's what we're checking. So if we go back to the admin here, now I am in the product, the first product here, number one. So if I refresh, I have access to this product. If I move away, I don't have access to uh, the, if you like, the second view or the second area remember the first area is the index so the inventory I don't have access to that at all on my home page um, I don't have then access to view the um, the list of objects but I do have permission to access the individual product now I can directly view the other product so that's ID2 and you can see that that is forbidden so at this point the staff user um, does have access as we specified via the object level permissions to the the first object which was this first product so let's go back in the code and let's just change uh, else let's return 
true. So if we aren't working at the kind of object level, um, we're going to uh, then just return true. So it's going to return true for has view change and delete. So if I go back here, refresh, nothing's changed here. But if I go to products now, I can actually view this list. And then I still don't have access uh, to viewing the actual product at the moment. But you can see that we've now have access to viewing all of the products in the list. And I still have forbidden. Um, I still can't access product two on a, an object level. I can still only access object one or sorry, the, the first product, the first object. So we now got a step closer. We now have uh, the list of objects. We can clearly view them and we can see which ones aren't accessible uh, based upon the object level permissions. However, what we want to do now, of course, is we want to start to finish this off so that the user can now see the model that they have object level permissions within uh, on some of the objects. And we need to then go ahead and make sure that potentially that the, the, the user can't see. Let's go ahead and remove the items that the user do doesn't have access to, because there's no point showing them to them so that they get forbidden. Um, we may as well not show the items to them. So we're only going to show the items that they have or the objects that they have access to. So let's create a, a new function here. We're going to utilize this function to get all the rows of data that the user does have permission to access. And we utilize the get objects for user from Guardian to, to help us perform this operation. So let's create a new function then called get, uh, get model objects. Take in self, and we're going to need the request uh, action equals none. And then we're going to have this class equals none. So let's drill down a little bit into the get objects for user. So this returns a query set of objects for which a given user has all permissions present. At perms. So we're going to check to see what permissions uh, the user has per object. And then, of course, just return those objects. So it's worth reading through some of these parameters. We are using them. So, for example, class. So, class may be a model, manager, or query set object. So, we're just basically defining um, through class whether we're utilizing a model, whether it's the name of the manager or query set. Um, I think we're using that. Uh, we're going to be passing in class. Uh, in addition to that, obviously, we need to set the permissions or we're going to loop through um, the permissions. Um, so as and when we need, we'll drop into this. But as well, we're just reading through this uh, function because this is what we're going to be utilizing to grab the, the objects um, based upon permissions for the user. So let's go ahead. Uh, we need to give ourselves some when I was in capitals, we're going to need to potentially access the metadata. So ops equals self dot ops. And then let's say actions equals and whatever actions we pass in. And then let's define our class equals class. So if we do define our class, then we're going to utilize it. If else, we're going to use class um, else uh, we're going to say ops dot the name of the model. So that just gives us the option of, like I said, we can pass in from the function here, we can pass in the name of the model, manager, or query set object. So next up, uh, we'll say the model name. Let's sort out the model name so that we can actually set up our permissions so we can check them. Uh, so model name. So that's going to equal class dot, and let me just use the the meta dot model name. Okay, so now we have that in place. So let's now go ahead and return. So we're going to return. So let's get object uh, objects for user. Okay, so we're going to need to bring that in. So I've already uh, brought that in from the Guardian shortcuts. Import get objects for user. And then next up, we just need to supply user equals 
request.user. So we now know the user. Uh, let's now set up our permissions. So here we are going to use a kind of dynamic permissions. Remember, we're going to pass them in based upon the actions. So let's go ahead and use an F string. So we're going to say permission. So So we are going to loop through actions, so that's going to be placed right there, the permission. That's going to be view, edit, or delete. And then we're going to have the model name. So we're supplying the model name. And then let's loop through all of the permissions that may exist, or we may have passed in, so for permin actions. So remember, we're catching all the actions that have been passed in. So now let's go ahead and pass in our comma, sorry, class equals class. And then last of all, we're going to pass in any perm. If true, any of permission, any of permission in sequence is accepted. So the default is false. So we're just going to set that to true. any perm equals true. So we should now have a function that's going to return a list of items based upon the object permissions for a particular user. So we then, obviously we specified the user, we specified the permissions. Um, so we checked the permissions that the user might have. And then we've gone ahead and loop through them. And so now we can apply this to the query set. So remember the query set is what is being used to actually then gather this list here um, of items inside of our model. So let's apply it to our query set. So we've already overridden. So let's say data equals and then self.get uh, model objects and then pass in the request and then we're going to return the data okay now we do want to set it so that the admin can access everything still so let's say if a request is a request dot user dot is super user then we'll go ahead and just return everything else we'll say that the data um, we'll then go ahead and call our function here to check to see what data should be outputted and then we'll return that data so if we check to see the result of this we now have a list of zero products so why is that well because here we're actually trying to grab a list of items but we're not actually passing in um, we're only passing in requests, so we're not actually passing in any actions at all. So what we need to do, if we don't do that, we need to say if action um, else, let's just pass in some actions. And we can then use the lies that to test it against the user. So view, uh, edit, and then finally, I think the last one is, yeah, we can do delete as well. Okay, so that's the, the set of actions that what we're going to test against the user. So let's go back here and refresh. And you can now see it's filtered out the product too because we don't have any object level permissions for this user that's logged in. Remember, we're a staff user at the moment, but we do for product one. So we can now access product one. Just to emphasize class, if we set it to none here and then return and then try and refresh or access, it says cannot determine the content type. So class, like we saw in the documentation, um, it's trying to essentially determine whether it's a model manager or query set object. So that's an important aspect to have. And that's why we set up class here to determine um, exactly that. So we can either pass it in or else we're just going to assume it's, uh, we're going to pass in the model. Okay, so now we applied this to the, um, the query set, we can now also apply it to the, the initial, the index. So potentially now we can have the actual model 
appear in the list so the user can select the model from the index and then they can then see the data they can access and then they can only access the data that they have permissions or object level permissions so let's go ahead and change this now so if cpu user uh, let's return true else let's uh, return I remember that we aren't using a cpu user we're using staff so let's say get um get model objects um and then let's pass in the request and then just see if it exists or not. So what have we done here? Well, we fired off this get modeled model objects. And what we return essentially is uh, items that the user has object level permissions for. So if we return an object within that model that the user has object level permissions for, then we must uh, return uh, something. So it must something must exist. Therefore, this will then be true. So essentially, we're turning setting it to true. So first of all, we check to see if they're super user. Yep, they can access it. Else, this is going to be true or false. So if they do have mo object level permissions in the model, then this will return true. Uh, exists it, something will exist so we return true and if they don't have access to any of the objects inside of that model it'd be false so they won't be able to access the model so now remember this is on like the index level so if i now refresh and then go back to home you can now see i can see products i can now access products i can now only access the products that I have object level permissions to so our last step here we defined the object level permission. So here's the um, the ob the model. So here at the moment we've just set to true. So if I set this to false, let's just have a look at the behavior of this. If I just refresh, you can see I have now forbidden. Everything is forbidden because I don't have access to it. So I need to dynamically now also change access to that as well. And of course, it's the same step as we've just taken. So here we've just checked to see um, whether the user does have object level permissions within the object. If they do, then that's going to return true. So we can perform the same operation here again on the kind of the model. Uh, so let's change that and let's just go back and refresh. And you can now see we have access again because the user does have object level permissions on one of the objects inside the products table. So I do hope you've enjoyed working through that exercise, that example. Now, Working with object level permissions in the view is probably a little bit easier to do than uh, the extra bit of work that we needed to undertake to get the admin working potentially how we how we want to. So the code is a little bit expandable. Hopefully you can follow that code. I've tried to break it down for you to make it easier to understand. Uh, thank you again for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.